Radio Rahim with Deontay Wilder. We've talked about so many things, including Anthony Joshua. After coming off an injury, waiting almost two years to fight again, what did it feel like seeing that man go down? I mean, it felt great. You know, uh, like I said, it was it was it's meaningful to me because there has been there hasn't been no man that I have faced that I haven't knocked out, and that meant a lot to me. And um, I'm glad that I can do it in Brooklyn amongst these, these fans here and stuff like that. So now I can move on. Now we know that there's no excuses left. The chapter of me and Stavern is closed now, officially. Give your official message to Anthony Joshua, knowing that everybody wants this fight next. What do you have to say to the champ? Short, sweet, and simple. Joshua, I'm coming. Radio Rahim with Deontay Wilder, WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Well, thank you guys for, for waiting so patiently. And uh, I guess we got some great news tonight. I don't have to retire. So <laughs> uh, you know, it was a magical night for one, you know, back in Brooklyn. Uh, for the second time, what a great place to be with an electrifying crowd again to support and love. You know, being from Alabama and coming all the way over here to Brooklyn, New York, man, to seeing the love just like back home, man, it, it really touches my heart. You know, and all, I'm always filled with joy to come here each and every time to perform for you guys. And um, it was a magical night tonight, you know. And uh, again, I said history is it's not a man that have fought me. That I haven't knocked out, so mm. Facts. I'm just ready to prove that I am the best, you know. That's all I want. You know, of course the burn for some wasn't the best. You know, some already predicted it. I said I was gonna knock them out, and I did that. And now, you know, I over and over again I keep sending messages out to the heavyweight division that I am the man to be. I am the most feared. I am the. I, I. I do hit the hardest. You know. I am who I say I am. I don't speak. I don't say things just to say it because of people have cameras in my face or people have. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I just want to prove that I am the best. I want. I want to know for myself. You know. I say it. I believe it, and I'm receiving it. Now, I want to prove it to the world. So. Hopefully these heavyweights in the division see what I've done and don't get too frightened. Hope they want to feel the same way. I want to unify the division. The heavyweight division is too small to have so many champions, three and four. I mean, well, three. You know, it should be one champion, one face, one name. His name's Deontay Wilder. Any questions, guys? Mm -hmm. Deontay, good evening. Um, Gareth O'Leary from the Telegraph and TalkSport. Um, we've enjoyed you being over in the UK before. Um, there's not many people here from the UK, and obviously we saw Anthony Joshua um, perhaps labour against Carlos Takam a bit last week. Can you give a message to the UK, to Anthony Joshua, about how you feel tonight after this and what we really ought to be seeing in the heavyweight division? Well, just to Joshua, you know, y'all have seen many other times up on podiums, y'all have seen me on social media. You know, there's only so much I can say. If I want to unify. Is he up for the challenge? Like I said, I declare war. You know, this is not a battle, this is war, because I want all the belts. You know, and I'm not looking for, for uh, when I beat him, I'm not looking for the second time around, because it's going to be so bad and so brutal that the, second, the first time is going to be enough. It's going to be like no moss. Is there a danger you can get off tonight, though? I'm scared, I'm scared of heavyweights each and every time, don't you see? You know, I am the most feared. And if I'm not, then I want somebody to shut me up. I want somebody to prove that to me. I want to I, I wanna be proven wrong. But for right now, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like nobody's going to prove me wrong. Who has the guts? He can run for so long, 
for so far. You know, and I hate this, I hate you, I, I hate this, you know, say this, but it seemed like this is turning into a, a Riddy Bow and a Lennox Lewis effect. Mm -hmm. And if so, then you need to go and throw those belts in the trash can because I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> to burn out, you know. I kept saying, you know, when you fight a guy the first time, it's a learning experience. The second time is a learning experience as well, but the difference is you, you already know that person a little bit more than, the, than, the, than the, the second time, than the first time. And I knew everything about Sister Burn. We had nine different guys come in. I had nine different great looks, you know. Some would say my sparring partner was even tougher, but, you know, the only thing that was different between the sparring partner and this is that uh, I think I went more rounds in Spartan this time. <laughs> no disrespect, you know, because you must respect fighters in the ring. I tell, every, all the, I tell people all the time, you know, I don't even like the term bombs. Everybody want to say bombs until you get up in there and you be the one that been dropped and become the bomb. You know, and we must respect fighters because they risk their life, and it's, it's nothing to play around with. Especially with the mentality that I have as a champion, as a person. I have to be so hungry, I have to be so mean. You know, when a lion is hungry, they say it, it, it feel like it's, they have been starving for a year, so when they see his prey, it's ready to eat everything, and that's how I feel like when I'm in the, in the ring, like a lion, like a king that I am. snacks. <laughs> so. Um, the second question then? Do you think he's looking at this performance and says, yeah, I want to fight you? Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. You know, if so, then he would have been accepting my offer. He would have been, been eager to, to fight me a long time ago. It seems like nowadays his promoter doing more to the talking than him. He's not even confident as a champion. You know, he want to put himself in a better position to beat me, but the thing about it is no better position to beat me. It's, it, it, you know, that don't exist because I'm a hungry champion. I'm going to be around for a very long time. I'm on a mission. And when you're on a mission, you're not going to stop until you complete and accomplish the mission. So, Joshua, you can run, run, run as fast as you can. I will catch you. <laughs> okay, Joshua, I've been covering boxing for 20 years. I've never seen a fighter knock out another fighter as the fighter was in a perfect defensive position and you still knocked him out. How are you able to do that? As I said, I got Alabama country power. <laughs> I mean, my power is real. You know, nowadays we don't even, it ain't no need of me getting on the scale no more. You know, I don't, you know, I'm always low when it comes to weight wise and stuff like that, but we don't we don't even really think about it no more. You know what I mean? The weight is gonna be what it is. You know, like I said, I always tell the story that my grandma always said I was anointed by God. You know, I always say that she wouldn't even let my parents do me. She would get very upset if they did. You know, she would tell them he's the one that's gonna bring y'all up. He's he's the chosen one. Instead of disciplining me, she used to teach me, she used to talk to me, you know, she used to tell me things, you know. She, I was a favorite as well, too. So, you know, I definitely feel like I am the chosen one. I'm, I, I'm meant to do something great in this world. And I think boxing is just a platform that's gonna allow me to really get to where I really wanna go and what, what really got, God got for me. Right. Deontay, Chris Conner, last call. Congratulations again. We talked about the last time we here working with you. Felt like this card was cursed. You went from Luis Ortiz to Remains to Burn. You have to share the spotlight here with the UFC. Anthony Joshua doesn't want to fight you. How much of this fight for you is just getting all that anger out, all the anger of being ducked, overlooked, people saying that you start this by getting guys to falsely test positive. How much of this was just taking all your anger out on the reins to burn? I think it was all 100% of that. Every bit of the work, every bit of what you said. You know, it was all of everything in one big snowball, you know, it was just a snowball building up, building up, building up, building up. And especially with the, when the Ortiz, Ortiz situation came about, man, you know, I really broke down. I had a, 
I don't know, it, it was crazy. It took me back to my older days when I was, I mean, my younger days when I was young. And me, I used to huff and puff, and when I cried, you knew so, you better get out of the way because he was going to be a Tasmanian devil. And when Shelly called me, I was like, and Shelly, you know, I, when Shelly calls me, I, I know when something's wrong, and I know when something's going right by the, by his voice. I could detect in his voice, and, I, and when Shelly called me, I said, um, um, Shelly, get to, straight to the point. Ortiz felt the drug test. And when he did that, you know, it's just my, my heart dropped to my stomach. And, you know, I just, I, I bust out with tears. You know, it was tears of anger because I want to prove myself so bad. Like, I never wanted to prove myself so bad. Now, not to me, but to the world, you know, because so many people blame me for so many different things that not, don't have nothing to do t with me, you know. I try to fight the best. I've called out the best. The best haven't accepted my, my, my challenge. The best always take an easier route, you know? And that's the, that's the facts of Deontay Wilder. This is nothing that I'm making up. This is nothing that, that I just, all of a sudden just Im imagining. This is real life for me, you know? And I just want to prove myself. You know, I said it before, in Showtime, it's almost as if like you want to do something so bad, like as if, if you constipated, like you just, you know. <laughs> I want to prove myself, and, and I know, I know after this, I know after this that the heat is going to be on the on the other champions, you know, definitely Joshua, because that's who people want to see, and that's what I want as well too. So after this fight, you know, the, the pressure is definitely going to be on. You know, I think I've won a lot of fans, not only Americans but UKs and people. UK fans and people all, all around the world. So that's the that's the mega fight, and that's the one I want, and uh, we will get it. I don't say hope. I, I'm not gonna say if. I'm gonna speak it. I believe it. I'm gonna receive it. Hey Deontay, congratulations. Uh, we talk a lot about Anthony Joshua, and, and, and you want. I know you want that fight, but since it doesn't appear as though that will be the next fight for you. Or the next fight for him, frankly, right? you know, you're gonna have to have other fight or fights between now and then. What kind of fight could you have that's not Joshua that would at least interest you or excite you? Uh, who else is out there that you could be interested to fight? Well, we got a lot of guys in the heavyweight division. Of course, you've heard them running mouth many a times, and uh, we got a lot of up and coming guys as well too. And you know, we just seen one of the guys that I got history with, and it's not a positive history. That's in Brazil. So that could be a potential one next as well too, while we wait, 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 you know, for the so-called best heavyweight champion in the world. So, you know, we have options. We definitely have options. I don't want people to think that we don't have options, that uh, I, that I need a certain type of person, which I don't. You know, we have a lot of great heavyweights here. And uh, we're going to keep American boxing alive, especially the heavyweight division. It have heated up, and it's, it's, it's just continued to flame and, 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 and become even more heated as time goes by. So, you know, so we're just going to sit back. We're going to see what's going on. We're going to go to Joshua Dillon people. We're going to see what's up, see can they not wait and make a date. If not, then we move on. Hey, Deontay, Andy, Emilio, ES News, congrats. Big statement win. Um, kind of drawing a parallel here. I saw you pound your chest and then you were standing over him. It kind of reminded me of the fight you had with Charlie Z when you kept telling him, get up, get up. <laughs> like you just wanted to hurt him. Can you just like elaborate a little more on uh, the emotions that were in the ring when Stavern was knocked down and you wanted to fight him more? I've, I've only seen you do that twice. Yeah, you know, I just, you know, I was in my element. You know, I felt, I felt so great in the, in the dressing room, you know. I was telling my people that uh, I haven't felt this good in a long time. You know, it, it, it took me back until my 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 early in my career when I felt so great when I was really blowing these guys out in the first and second and third round and stuff like that. And tonight I felt I felt that energy. I'm like, man, I feel so good. The gloves felt so great, like it was perfect. It was meant, you know. And you know, pounding my chest is letting him know that. I meant every word that I say, I am here. Nothing you can do can stop me. Nothing you can say can, can stop me. Whatever you do, I can do better. 
everything I told Stavern, you know, I really meant it for him. I don't know if he meant what he said when he was referring the things that he said to me, but I meant everything. And you know, even with, even, like I said, I meant everything, even with the killing part. I meant that. I meant that. Mm. I do want a body on my record. But, <laughs> but, I mean, that's just the bronze bummer mentality. Right now, I'm Deontay Wilder. I'm calm. I'm at peace. You know, I bring love. But the bronze bummer, you just never know what he's going to say or what he's going to get. But it's real. It's real. Everything is real. And, and thank God that um, he survived and see another day. You know, Deontay Wilder want everybody to go home. He want everybody to see a family. But I have family. I have kids. I love the devil. You know, and I, I definitely, you know, I say an individual prayer, and we say a team prayer. And the individual prayer, I always say I want the guys to go back home, you know. And I know a lot of people will say I, I contradict myself, but they got to understand it's two different personalities. I'm Deontay Wilder outside, and I'm the bronze bomber on the inside, and it's really real. Over here, over here champ. Uh, I know it was only one round, but how, how did the right hand hold up? And you mentioned that glove. I know it was a new glove for you. How do you think that worked for you now? The right hand is really great. It's, um, I think that I had so much rest, you know, over the time uh, to recover. My last fight was in February, so, and here we is now in, in um, November. So, you know, it's like a blessing in disguise that these guys are doing so much to, to delay so much other fights or whatever, because the only thing they've done was help me heal this hand, and it feel amazing. But my jab hand, you know, I came with a some good steam on that, and Stavern had always been hard, even from the first fight, so the second fight, you know, I hurt my knuckles a little bit, it's just a little swollen, but it'll, it'll be okay. I just want to say that you're an amazing dad, and your daughter is very lucky to have you, and I just want to say, are you willing to go to the UK to fight Joshua, because you know, numbers-wise, there's a lot more people that go over there to watch those fights, and you can make so much more money than here, or you want him to come here? That may not be sure. No, no, I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just, I don't know facts-wise. I'm just going by numbers-wise. What Joshua has to perform out there. 90 mil, 90,000. Put a mic in front of Sorry. I mean, that's what I see. That's what I see on TV. So. You, what you do see on TV is more people. Uh -huh. but not necessarily more dollars. Gotcha. Gotcha. When you go to Vegas, if they want this fight, they can put up more than anywhere. I agree. Um, I wanted to say something else, though. About six weeks ago, and this was not public, I got a letter, an email from Eddie Hearn, and he um, said, if you fight Dylan White, we'll get you Joshua next. I couldn't get on the phone quick enough for him, and he didn't answer, and I said, what's the matter, why aren't you in? He said, please give me a day, I just lost the fight with um, Pav, um, the one that he was supposed to fuel it. So the next day, I said to him, what's the um, deal? He said, what do you want to fight Dylan White? I said, that'll be made easy. When do we get Joshua? Never called me back. Next. I've been around this game a long time. If someone wants to fight, they fight. Joshua said he wants to fight Deontay next year. Deontay just finished his mandatory. You heard what he wants to do. Joshua finished his mandatory. You haven't heard a word from him. If Joshua wants to fight, Deontay is ready. If it means the right deal to go to the UK, he'll fight him on the move. He'll go anywhere. <laughs> To fight him and he said it so there's no silence there's no avoiding it's up to Joshua and if it's not then he has his reasons not to. Dan Rayford you just said the fight obviously won't happen next they're going to do something else why why can't it happen next they literally fought one week apart they're, neither one of them's hurt they're exactly on the same schedule no I don't know what they think I've just been around long enough to know right no and you're right because Anthony Joshua doesn't want to fight this man right now Probably Eddie Hearn, but okay. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> Eddie Hearn doesn't want Anthony Joshua to fight this yeah, guy. Yeah, want to fight each other. I don't, I don't, I don't think he want to fight me as bad as I want to fight him. I agree with that. Yes, sir. You came in a little bit lighter than normal at the weigh-in. Was that game plan? No, you know, 
it's, it's, it's funny how my body works, you know, and in camp, I'm always heavier. I'm always like in the 230s or something like that. It's like when it's time to to come to war, you know, it's always like my weight drop. And, and I don't do that. I don't, I don't take that. I don't, you know, I done tried the shelves. I done tried the nutritionists. I done tried all that stuff. And it seemed like the same effect over and over again. So I've just got comfortable with what I am. I tell people all the time that I'd rather be the, I'd rather look, I'd rather be the part than look the part. Looking the part, you know, it only gets you so far, but actually being that part, it gets you to to where, where I am now, you know? So I don't really care about guys being more weight than I, you know? It matter today. It don't, it, you know, it, it's never, it would never matter. Not, you know, ever, you know? Because one thing about it that people can't measure, nor can they weigh, it's my heart, you know? It's big, it's heavy. So when these guys fight me, they better be ready. And the last question, Luis King Kong Ortiz was in attendance for your fight. Do you have any thoughts on that? You know, I'm not going to even lie. When I, when I, when I saw him at the, at the uh, hotel coming out of the elevator, I almost puked in my mouth. Because, you know, I got so much. I got so much because of, but when I say I got so much, I got so much people throwing the fault at me, the blame at me. But it ain't had nothing to do with me. Look, I was going to pay a guy suicide money out of my pocket to fight him, to show you guys, to entertain you guys, and to prove to myself that I am the best. And what happened? I don't know, I don't care what reason that they said they came up with, you know, a lot of stuff not add up with what they say. How about just don't take nap? You know, all of a sudden, you know, you fight this person, you fight that person, nothing come up, nothing come up. And all of a sudden, overnight, you get you get old and blood pressure pills come up. It's a massive and stuff. Like, come on, man. Like, you know, I would have loved to share the ring with Lord Ortiz. Just like Povakin and all the other rest of them. I would have loved to share the ring with them, man. Looking like looking like for Povakin, you know, I may end up sharing the ring with him as well, too, because he's moving on up. At the end of the day, man, what, what does it do to Bro. catch a... Yes, sir. You ready? Listen to this, right? Since the Pavekin camp, I don't got a question, I got like a statement. <laughs> Since the Pavekin camp, that's the best I've ever seen with the Pavekin camp. Mm -hmm. the training. When I came to training through this time, it was so much a mindset that just was a lot more on the point of feet with everything. If you really want to do bad intentions, it's to burn, right? Mm -hmm. So this fight reminds me of, Tommy Hearns wanted to make a statement with Roberto Duran mm. and he offers Murphy. So you know what I wanted to say? Oh, snap! You made the bird! You want it? You got it! Congratulations. First of all, nice coat. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. You look like the best champion in the world. Um, Probably the most charismatic heavyweight champion we've had since the great Muhammad Ali. I think I can say that. Uh, is there a part of you that just wants to go to the UK to fight Anthony Joshua, or anywhere for that matter? Because Ali was famous for traveling abroad and you know, anybody saying, I'll fight you wherever you want to go and everything. Is, is there a part of you that just wants to have that as a part of your legacy? You know, I'll go anywhere. Like I said, my, my title says the NBA champion of the world. And with that being said, I'll travel anywhere. Anywhere. You know, as to be a champion, I feel that you can't just be, you, just, you can't just fight in your country. You can't just stay, you know, temporary where you are. Like, uh, I wouldn't say temporary, or what he's trying to do is stay permanent in the UK because of what the things they got going on. That looks good over there and all that and stuff like that, but the method, and the money will always be in America, always. And this always. is called prize fight. So the <laughs> fight should happen where the biggest prize is. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll travel anywhere, you know. All I want to do, to do like I said, don't wait, make the date, and Deontay Wilder will be there. Mm -hmm. Here we go, Deontay. Deontay, congratulations on a big win to you and your team. Uh, question. Uh, your ring entrance was probably longer than the fight. <laughs> how, how did the collaboration on you and 50 hook up? Well, you know, 50 is a great guy, man. I know he 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 makes jokes and stuff like that. I, I told 50 in the back he should he should start stand up 
stand-up uh, comedy or something like that because he really is a, a funny guy. And you know, with the, with the relationship with me and 50, I really had to owe it to my brother, uh, Manu New. Jones right New. here. You know what I mean? My brother right there, man. You know, that's how it all started uh, with Manu. And uh, it's, been, it's been on ever since. You know, 50 really a great guy. You know, and uh, he definitely wants the best for people, and uh, he want to put people in positions where they can, they can benefit from it and stuff like that. So you know, and, and you know, he's a he's a friend of mine as well too. You know, he's into boxing. He loves boxing. He actually do it himself as well too. So the connection was easy, and uh, and I told him he should come out and walk with me. And the mini man sound was perfect for the situation. <laughs> Last question. Deontay, do you think that uh, the UK fans should hold Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua accountable for not fighting you and not support anything that's next, not Deontay Wilder? Oh, uh, most definitely. They should do them like they did Jesus. Put them on the top. <laughs> they should throw letters and spit on them and, and you know, and, you know. It's about that time. That's what the world wanna see, you know. I think it's a lot of a lot of fans in the UK wanna see it, but I think it's a lot of fans that don't wanna see it because they know what I bring. They know what I'm capable of doing. And you know, they got a great thing going over there. So, you know, they want to continue to do what they're doing as long as they can. But the thing about it, it all it all has to come to an end at some point in time. Mm -hmm. He can only fight so many people. I mean, he shares the same division as I. And as you can see, it's a very small division. So our paths, our paths must cross at some point in time. And I'm saying, why why wait and let's make it now? Why why wait? How I many who else can he fight? I know they got a lot of England guys just like I got American guys, but really, people want to see the best fight the best. And I want to prove that I am the best, so I want to fight the best. If Anthony is the best, if Parker the best, put him up to the test. All right, guys, let's give the champ one sir.